Hello and welcome, my name is Lunami. Today we're going to be looking at Ashen's right mouse button, Kador's Command. Kador's Command allows you to command and summon Kador on the battlefield, depending on the location. As you can see, there is a set parameter of how far you can summon Kador with this skill. This radius also highlights Kador's attack and tether range. He will only move this far and walk back to you and walk forward to the target at this distance. He sometimes will bug out and walk a bit further than normal, but as soon as he goes past this point, he should generally walk back to you unless you go really far and then he will teleport right back to you more or less. When the long range tether line is broke, Kador will instantly teleport back to you, ignoring all terrain. When the short range tether line is broke, Kador will just generally walk back to you. Just a heads up, Kador cannot walk down cliffs, nor can he walk up cliffs, because Kador. So if you put Kador up high, he will find the longest route down to come to you, instead of just jumping down. So always remember that Kador will always be lagging behind, so always remember to use your right mouse button to keep him close by. If not, break the tether so he'll actually jump to you. So moving right along to Kador's placements when you fight in enemies. Whenever you're fighting enemies, you always want to be placing Kador on the side of the enemy, not directly in front. If you place him directly in front, he will be attacked by the enemy. So you always want to keep him close to the side so then the enemy doesn't know he's there or behind. When you're also not using Kador, you also want to try and keep him hidden. So keep him around corners so he's not actually sticking out so the enemy can actually get free focus off him. Because free focus means more wins and team fights. And that's not generally good, just giving the enemy focus so they can upgrade and win team fights. So always keep Kador hidden in weird locations, but always close by so he's not actually sticking himself out. You mostly do this to stop the enemies attacking Kador and to stop the enemies from escaping. At least Kador's going to be behind him when he runs away. So you always want to keep Kador to the left, the right and to the behind the enemy. Never really in front. If he's in front then it's not really ideal. The only time you ever want to use Kador in front is when you're going to use him more or less as a shield to try and stop like big moves and anything from really hurting Ashlyn directly at close range. So Kador is more or less going to be in front of you and you're going to be hitting him and using him and rotating with him. But other than that you don't really want to be putting Kador directly in front of the enemy because that's not good. When using Kador's RMB you want to be thinking of body block positions so always place Kador in a position that will body block the enemy. When they run back you want to be placing it behind the enemy so he's running towards the enemy more or less. So as you can see the enemy is running away here and I want to be placing that directly in front so the enemy will run into Kador like so. And this will body block him for a short second and if he runs away like so in a minute it will do over here. And you want to be placing Kador just directly in front of him so then he is forced to walk around the Motigun or the player. So imagine Beckett was standing here. I quickly drew this up for a quick example. Um, it's a pretty poor image but we'll get this to the point. So if Kate Beckett's standing there and she's got her armor pen bullets which she probably will mostly have if there's any AI comp on your team she'll probably when she fires them, they will pass straight for you. They'll hit Kador once, set fire to him, so he'll be burning like, ah. And then it'll f set fire to you as well, and you'll be burning. And then the same for everybody else behind, they'll all be on fire. So always never stay in line with Kador if there's like anybody on the enemy team with armor. You always want to be to the offset. So you always want to be kind of over here or over here, which is an ideal spot. But never stay directly in the line of any AI when there is an armor pen person on the other team. So diving right into Kador's charge. So Kador gains 50% damage once every 7 seconds. This is a bit misleading because it's one skill and it will be one hit. And it will only apply for that one hit. And then after that it will just reset back to his basic abilities. You'll see the attack once he's attacking the enemy so I'll show it you. So this is the main attack. it will spin. That's the only one that happens for the actual 50% more damage. So this skill you want to be using if you're going fully aggressive and your team does not need the support ability so it's really handy for that but then if you're going for that sort of stuff you want to upgrade it to the three seconds or burning. So 
you either want to upgrade it to burning blade or faster recharge faster recharge will happen every three more seconds if you end up stacking into burning blade this will give kador an extra 40 damage every second for three seconds this is 120 damage that kador deals once every seven seconds because it relinks in with kador's charge so this will only happen every seven seconds plus the extra 50 damage from that natural attack the only time you really want to be using Burning Blade is when you're using a Burning Ashling on your left path, so Father's Flame. So this is the only time you really want to be using a Burning Blade. Any other time you won't really use it because you're not going for that pure damage build. I highly recommend not taking Burning Blade unless you also have a Char Knock on your team because this is just going to be more or less pointless because it's only 3 seconds unless you would actually initiate on the enemy. You're not going to get the burning proc for um, Father's Flame. Jumping right into the most important skill for Ashling on right path Kador's defenses. This gives Ashling 10% armor. This is an area effect around Kador, so just remember that. And this skill will only activate if you re bring Kador back into the blade and then resummon him. So it's ideal to take this early so the enemy doesn't know that you've actually recalled Kador in and Kador out. Because sometimes people will actually use this to your disadvantage, so then you will practically be useless because you haven't actually summoned Kador back in. To gain the benefit of this skill so the enemy would just generally use this against you because you're not going to get the actual benefits of this skill until that actually has happened whenever you upgrade or into Kador's defenses in Kador's restoration or Kador's might always remember to bring Kador back into the blade all these will not take effect if they do not take effect well you're not going to get them in battle and the enemy will use this as your advantage most people will always go into Kador's Defense and then Kador's Restoration. Kador's Defense will give 20 armor to your team as well as you or anybody around Kador. It's got a really small distance, so just a heads up. Kador's Restoration is the same. This gives you a plus 30 HP every second. So this is a really nice boost for those duels, 1v1 actions, especially when you're trying to trade with enemies or just going in for general team fights. Always remember, Kador needs to be in the center of the action, not at the front line. Because the front line, he will die really fast, and if Kador dies, you die. When I say Kador dies and you die, this is an overreaction, just meaning that you're going to lose like 90% of your kit, because Kador belongs to your kit. He is your kit, more or less. So if he dies, you generally die, unless you can get out really fast. But generally, if Kador dies, you get stunned, and this stun is enough to just stop you and get you killed by like trips or nosses or anything like that. So just always be wary of Kador's HP and always bring him back. Although Kador's death timer is very similar to his E timer for returning him to his blade, I highly don't recommend letting Kador die because your Q will go on cooldown, your right mouse button will go on cooldown, and your E will go on cooldown for 15 seconds instead of the E going on cooldown for just generally 15 seconds. So always be wary of that. Do not let Kador die. Thank you all for watching. I hope this has given you a better insight into Ashling and Kador's command for her right mouse button. I will leave some bloopers in and some stuff because Kador's AI is absolutely useless at times and he will just walk off and do some weird stuff. So you get to enjoy them because he behaves like a dog. Um, so have fun and see you all. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more content like this. See you all and any comments in the comment box below. Yeah. I'm essentially a ghost, but he's already a ghost. Unless he bugs out like that, and then it's awkward, and I don't know what he's doing now. Heck, it was here. I'm going to just draw a stick man, because that's totally appropriate. So imagine Beckett was here, so she's here. Her line of sight is over here somewhere. I'm actually an animator, and this is just appalling to me, but it's kind of funny. All right, so imagine now he can't get to you generally, unless you walk away, and then he will actually go, like, ghostly, and then teleport to you. And I've actually bugged out Kador, never mind. Example was would be for this. Imagine if Beckett was over here somewhere. Uh that's gonna be Beckett. I'm sorry, Beckett, you've got your funny hair like so. She's got a cannon. I'm an actually an artist, an animator, and I'm drawing this badly. <laughs> oh, I can change the dot size. Alright, cool. Alright, that's